And well, it was only last week that former Prime Minister John Howard made a stinging intervention into the national debate, telling Anthony Albanese to stop riding on the coattails of Howard, Hawke and Keating. It's prompted a fresh debate over the opposition leader's personal and political transformation from a loud and proud left-wing warrior to a slimmed-down, small-target moderate. Begging the question, of course, who is the bloke that could become the Prime Minister in a matter of weeks? Mark Latham is the leader of One Nation in New South Wales, a former proud leader of the Labor Party, of course. He joins me now from Sydney. Well, you're a contemporary of his for many, many years. You both came up through the ranks in New South Wales. Uh, you were Federal Labor leader during the Howard years. Is the Albanese we're being sold in the coming election, the Albanese that you've known for most of your career, Mark Latham? No, Peter, this is a fake Albo. Uh, this is a politician reconstructed solely for the purpose of winning the election uh, in that he knows that if he put forward his true beliefs, he, he'd be unelectable. So to understand Albanese very clearly, there are four significant markers. One, those speeches he used to make at Labor Party conferences as a leader of the left in the 1990s, attacking the economic policies of the Hawke and Keating government. So he's, he's against those pro-market growth policies. Um, the second marker was um, his maiden speech in 1996 when he said he was in support of an ever-expanding public sector, and, and that's his tax and spend philosophy. Uh, the third market was in the time of Simon Preen's leadership, when Albanese, we had an internal debate about uh, if you're on $100,000 a year in Sydney, does that make you wealthy and subject to higher taxes? And Albanese said yes. He said they're the people we should be taxing to raise revenue for that expansion of the public sector. And also at that time, he, he said people in Western Sydney were racist for wanting an orderly border protection policy for not letting the, um, the, the people smugglers and the, and the boat people in. And then the fourth and final marker, really, is his very strong support of Kevin Rudd uh, and destabilisation of Gillard during that dreadful Rudd-Gillard government. Uh, you know, Rudd mm. spending like there was no tomorrow, and Albanese supported that 100%. So we've never had a Labor leader who has been a left-wing faction boss, but this is Albanese's true form. But he's got to disguise all of that, you know. He's become a master illusionist, illusionist to turn himself into a very different person solely for the purposes of the election. Yeah, well, we saw that in Victoria in 2014 when Daniel Andrews was opposition leader and he was running almost like he was a creature of the Labor right. But the lived experience of Victorians is he is hard, hard Labor left. Help my, help my viewers understand, Mark, what would an Albanese left-wing leader, left-wing government mean for Australia? Well, it'd be woke on steroids. Uh, you see, they'd revert to type. You've got to govern. You can't just refer to some press release you put out nine months ago. Events happen and, and they'd have to govern in a way that would be unrecognisable from uh, the era of Hawke and Keating uh, because what's changed inside the Labor Party, Peter, is that the right-wing faction it used to have the ballast of, of Sussex Street right wing, which was pro-economic growth, pro-reform, pro-the-market economy and, and strong on border protection. Uh, the right in Canberra now has about, say, 50 people in the caucus. The 25 of those support the, the left program. They might as well be in the left wing faction. And there's only about 20 odd um, uh, true right wingers in the Labor Party uh, these days in Canberra. I think Joel Fitzgibbon calls them the Otis group. And, and they'd be true to the best traditions of the party, but uh, they'll be overwhelmed in terms of caucus numbers and ministerial slots if Albanese was to form a government. Uh, it, it would run the policies that he's always supported in his inner Sydney seat of Grainlow, which is uh, woke on steroids. I suspect we're going to hear a lot more about uh, your long history uh, with the Labor leader, Mark Latham. Thank you for your time.